All right, let's talk about the Eagles who are now on a three-game losing streak. And like, listen, I mean, the 49ers went on a three-game losing streak this season. It's it's not insurmountable, but for a team that looked like they were going to coast to the number one seed, uh, now have to fight to just win the division. Granted, very easy schedule coming up with the Giants twice and the Cardinals to end the season, but nevertheless, uh, you know, we talked a lot about the defense and the struggles there with kind of their veteran corners, but I want to talk about the offense and why things aren't really working so far with them. And I'm actually going to start off with a positive play, which might seem weird, but you'll understand why I'm doing this once we get going here. Because So this is kind of what the Eagles like to do a lot of, right? It's a lot of, you know, this time it's going to be a Jalen Hurts run where they're going to, you know, fake a running play to the offense's right. Hurts is going to run towards the bottom of the screen. You see that there is a Seahawks linebacker. I've circled him. Uh, it's, it's Bobby Wagner, actually. Okay, pretty good linebacker, but that's the guy they're going to try and fool. Watch as when this play begins, you see Wagner does move in towards the middle of the field, you know, pretty uh, aggressively. He's looking in that direction for a handoff. This is the value of a quarterback who can run with the football. You see Hertz is going to scramble to the outside and pick up a first down. So, okay, why am I showing this play then? This is a positive play. Good pl job by the Eagles. Well, because that's kind of how their offense a lot of times almost has to run. It has to be an offense that is just doing the little things. It's not getting a ton of explosive plays. These past few weeks, at least, it hasn't been getting a ton of explosive plays. And they've tried stuff like this, you know, third down and eight. I mean, this was, you know, last year, this was kind of their bread and butter. Teams were like straight up not playing man coverage on A.J. Brown because like, you know, bad things would happen. Well, here, Seahawks, third and eight, one-on-one -on -one matchup to A.J. Brown. Let's see what happens. And look, as you see, Hertz is going to take the snap. He is going to look in that direction. He fires in that direction. And, you know, there is a, a window right here. But the issue is they're not on the same page. Watch as this throw goes well short of Brown. So, you know, doesn't matter how good of a receiver you are. If the ball is not getting to you, uh, nothing you can do right there. So that's, uh, you know, that's an issue for sure. And, you know, obviously, there was a very, you know, more important uh, moment when it didn't work out, like going over here. So this is, you know, to set the stage, looking at the scoreboard, 13 seconds left, but the Eagles are okay. You're only down three and you have two timeouts. So you realistically have time for two plays, just get in field goal range. Jake Elliott has a big leg. I mean, you know, quite frankly, if you gain 10, 11 yards here, you're giving Elliott a chance. Obviously, you, you love to gain probably closer to 20 to feel at least somewhat comfortable about it. But they have A.J. Brown running up, you know, what's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside. So, you know, you don't have to throw it deep down the field like this, but I can understand the logic as to why you would want to. Hertz is going to take the snap. He, you know, reads the defense, says, yeah, let's put the ball in Brown's direction. But he waits too long and puts a ton of air under it. So, like, you know, give your receiver a chance. Sure, that makes sense. The issue is that the safety now has a chance to run all the way over and make a play. This is no longer a one-on-one -on -one matchup because Hertz waited too long and put too much air under it. And you see, I mean, you know, uh, Love makes a great play on that one. Got to give him credit. But at the same time, there was things Hertz could have done to avoid that. And the reality is they're just not hitting on these explosive plays. And when you don't hit on explosive plays, you know, bad things happen. Because then you have to run these 12 play drives, which they're more than capable of doing. But if you rely on it, well, then, you know, penalties can happen. Then you can get off your game eventually. You know, you can turn the ball over like right here on an interception, which was an attempt to get a chunk play, ironically enough. But, you know, again, a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And I wanted to bring up a couple more just because, listen, uh, it is not an A.J. Brown issue. A.J. Brown is a great receiver. A.J. Brown could win on the outside. I don't want to make it seem like he is the problem. And in fact, I think that there will be moments when he starts to, you know, get going. He makes a couple of big plays and they're able to kind of, you know, uh, go back towards uh, him being, you know, an elite player and all that. But like something like this. So you have Quez Watkins working one on one against once again, Julian Love, uh, who's you know going to be one on one on the outside. Well, all right. I mean, that's, you know, not a, exactly a big time advantage or anything. Quez Watkins has one on the outside, though, in the past. Let's see if he can do it here. Watch as when Hertz takes the snap, he's going to look over in Watkins' direction. He fires in that direction. And, you know, again, is this open? Not really. But you're giving your receiver a chance. This one was actually not a terrible throw, but just a good defensive play by Love to box Watkins out. Again, if that's A.J. Brown, I do wonder if that goes differently right there. But, again, not being able to make that play, try and get a touchdown. Instead, you turn the football over. 
and even stuff like this where it's like, you know, this time they're going back to the well. They're going to try to win a one-on-one matchup on the outside. Uh, and this time it's DeAndre Swift, the running back, which like, okay, I get it. You get a mismatch. You get a favorable matchup. But, you know, let's see how it works out. Hertz is going to take the snap. You're going to see Swift, you know, makes a move, goes down the field. Is there a little bit of separation? Again, we're talking perfect throw and perfect catch is what you need here for the Eagles. And really, they're not even close. So, like, you know, there's so much value what the Eagles can do with the underneath stuff and the running game and all of that. But at the end of the day, if you can't get explosives and you're relying on 12 play drives to put points on the board, things are going to go wrong. You're going to get a penalty. A receiver is going to run a wrong route. You're going to get sacked at one point or you're going to, you know, throw an interception at some point. You need to be able to sometimes get down the field in like, you know, seven plays. Listen, a 12 play drive is great. You know, you'll take a 12 play drive. It's just really hard to do. It's easier to go down the field if you can get explosives. And also, I'm going to criticize the coaching for a bit. I've been very pro Nick Sirianni. I might be the most pro Nick Sirianni person on the planet. This situation, though, he did this a couple times, and he needs to stop this. It's a third down and six situation for the Eagles. So, you know, it's one of those things where third down and six for them is kind of, you know, not exactly third down and six. Usually you have to convert here or you're kicking a field goal. But the Eagles know that if they get close, they can go for it. So on this one, they run the football and it ends up getting, you know, uh, tackled for no gain. And then they kick the field goal instead because they didn't gain any yards. It almost feels like they know where to have to get to for fourth down. And so they're playing for fourth down instead of just trying to convert on third down. Personally, if you're going to convert, go for it on fourth down, if you get close enough, well, then just make up your mind. We're going for it no matter what, unless there's a sack, and we'll just try to throw it twice towards the end zone. I, I would rather that, or maybe, you know, have an under, you know, you don't have to throw it towards the end zone, but like, at least have an option in that direction, and it did this a uh, couple times, actually one earlier on this drive, which they then set up a fourth and short and converted on, but it still was like a fourth and three. It wasn't like a fourth and one where they could tush push. It's just one of those things where it's like, okay, it's smart that they go for it on fourth down so much. It is. It's a good idea to do that. But you're almost hurting yourself by making it harder for you to convert on third downs to try and make it easier for you to convert on fourth downs. I would rather you just try and convert on third down and not have to deal with fourth down. You know, it's the same reason why I don't love when a team runs the ball on a second down and six in a typical situation because it almost it basically guarantees you're going to have a third down. The goal is to avoid giving the football to the other team. This just, you know, forced you to essentially give the football to the other team. And again, also would have helped if they gained yards on the play. But, you know, uh, don't, you, you know you're, you're only calling plays. You can't guarantee something good or bad is going to happen. But yeah, uh, as a whole, I do think the offense can get better. And to me, it all starts with them winning on the outside. And they play some teams that you can win on the outside. Like I said, the Giants twice and the Cardinals, a way to get their groove back. I do think they end up winning out from here. But, I mean, it's tough. I mean, this loss makes it really tough to get the one seed. They had a real chance had they uh, won this game. So, definitely a tough loss for them. And the offense, again, for them, they have bigger, you know, minds mindset than just trying to get to, you know, win the division. They want to win the Super Bowl. If they're going to do that, they have to start getting chunk plays. That's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And, of course, as always, thanks for watching.